Good morning, everyone. This is Fred Emery from Heartland Campus Solutions. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this webinar on managing the campus box office. This web webinar is in listen-only mode. Uh, that means if you would like to ask any questions, feel free to go over to the GoToWebinar control panel under the questions area. Simply click in there and type in your questions and uh, we'll be able to, to answer them hopefully during the presentation. However, we will allow time at the end of the presentation to answer any questions that you've submitted. This webinar will be recorded and will be available on our website within usually about a week. We just need to bring this over to our marketing team to post on the website. I do apologize in advance if you happen to hear any coughing or sneezing during the presentation. I have a little bit of a cold. Um, so I may cough at one time or another, so I do apologize for that in advance. I'll try to mute when I hear one coming on so you don't get that sound. Okay, so let's get started. Managing the campus box office. Well, last week we um, talked about events in, in the one card system, and you know events are more meant to be events and services for you know, general admission events and specific services to track someone, go to the rec center or computer lab or something like that. Today we're talking more about a full service ticketing solution. For those facilities on your campus and events where you may have assigned seating, um, you're going to sit in row C, seat number three. Uh, generally, you know, theater events, concerts, seminars or lectures. Um, even some sporting events where you may have assigned seating would be handled through our one card box office program. So we're gonna delve into that today. The objectives for today's webinar is who is Heartland Campus Solutions? We'll give you a brief overview of who Heartland is for anyone who doesn't know. We're gonna talk about, well, what is box office? What is one card box office? How does it operate? What are the parts of it? What are the benefits of using box office as part of your one card system? the administrative application that's used to set up the events and all the different features of box office, the user portal where your students or even community members could go online and purchase tickets for uh, various events that you have on campus. And of course, then we'll take any questions. So let's start with who is Heartland? Heartland is uh, the fifth largest payment processor in North America. By that, I mean that we work with educational institutions, retail locations, restaurants to process financial transactions, meaning credit and debit cards, as well as, as, well as do payroll and some various other functions. But our core business is getting that card transaction through in a secure matter and allowing those merchants to accept Visa, MasterCard, Discover, Amex, and the like. We have uh, over 3,000 3, employees at Heartland Payment Systems, 800 which of sales professionals, 500 plus are development and security, and 700 plus are in customer service and operations support. We work with more than 250,000 merchants, 1,600 of which are colleges and universities. And we process more than $3.3 billion, billion transactions a year, which equals up to $122 billion in volume. The reason why I bring this up is Heartland Campus Solutions is a division of Heartland Payment Systems. And what we do with the one card system is take these transactions and process them, whether they're an activity, a privilege transaction, or a financial transaction. We're doing essentially the, the same thing as a payment processing network. We're taking the cards, accessing a database, and validating that transaction and returning an authorization or a decline. So we have that knowledge, that core knowledge uh, for payments and for card transactions that Heartland Payments Systems has, and we can bring it into the one card system in a secure and efficient manner. So let's talk about box office. 
Box office is a system designed for online purchases, for tickets for various events like films, sporting events, concerts, conferences, etc. It is a full service product that allows you as a, a campus to set up and manage your events on campus where you'll have assigned seating and do the ticketing all through one integrated application. It can run as a standalone system. However, it is fully integrated to the one card system um, to pull your patron data, you know, your, your card holders and what have you. It does allow though for community members to purchase tickets and then their information is stored in a database associated with one card box office. So you have then your patron database as well as knowing what students are attending what events, but allows for full ticketing for assigned seat locations. Part of the beauty of uh, the system though is that you license the product and then you don't have to pay per event. There's some other systems out there uh, that aren't integrated to a one card system necessarily, they're just a ticketing solution, but you have to pay per event, which can get quite pricey if you're a location that has a fair amount of events on campus that you would be doing ticketing for. If you have an active drama department or music department that are doing concerts and what have you, you can have quite a few uh, events on campus or even from your, your football games or, or whatnot if you do a side seating for a part of the stadium, it can really add up doing uh, a system that limits the number of events. With, with box office, you are able to manage as many events as you want within the system. Now, one card box office consists of two applications. One is an administrative desktop application that you do all the configuration of the system within, uh, setting up these events, setting up the pricing structure, the seating charts and all that is done through that administrative application. The second is a web application that your students and community members, staff and what have you, anyone who wants to buy a ticket would utilize to purchase those tickets. It's all web-based and would allow them to uh, go ahead and purchase tickets online. So why use box office for ticketing? Well, you could take advantage of the existing database. One card has a solid database and all the modules tap into it. So your student data is already available in, and the accounts are already created to tap into the one card account for a form of payment. As I mentioned, it can run as a standalone application as well. So it does have uh, its own database attached to it as well, which allows you to uh, store community members of patron data, maybe run specials or do particular marketing to those patrons, uh, perhaps get, you know, various club level uh, patrons that you might offer discounts to or have them take out a membership and they don't get discounts or get certain perks, priority parking, priority seating, or what have you. As I mentioned, it does serve the community members as well as, as your campus card holders. By pushing all the ticket sales to the web, or most of the ticket sales to the web, uh, you will reduce foot traffic. Sales for the events and services are via the web application. You can sell tickets right from the administrative application. So if you have a physical box office on campus or a ticket office, people can walk up to that window and purchase tickets, and you'll be able to, to sell them right through uh, the administrative application. However, you'll see the majority of the sales are happening online via the web application. It'll help you reduce cash handling because you will see more and more transactions go into the web and pay for via one card or a credit card. A lot of those third party systems that are out there that uh, are standalone applications that don't tap into one card won't allow the one card to be used as a form of payment. And we all know that students generally carry or can carry some decent amount of uh, a decent balance on their one card to purchase tickets from from uh, from box office and whatnot, or purchase tickets for events. So, not allowing them to utilize their one card as a form of payment for tickets really is a disservice disservice to the students. We want to make sure that they can purchase tickets 
as easily as, as could be and as efficiently as could be. And that's why the box office really helps out in that regard. You also can allow reduced pricing uh, or comp complimentary tickets to select purchasers. If somebody, let's say, is in a production that you're having on campus, they're in the concert or they're in the uh, the, the theatrical production, uh, let's say you're doing Fan of the Opera on, on campus, they can get their tickets at a reduced price or free. Maybe each member of the production gets uh, two free tickets. You also can set up the system where they are allowed to purchase tickets in advance of tickets being open for general admission. That's also where you could use that advanced ticket sales for, uh, let's say, club level members, patrons of the arts, uh, circle club members, VIPs, however you'd want to limit it, somebody that's uh, a patron of your theater productions or concerts that they that can purchase their tickets before they go on sale for general admission and pretty much be guaranteed to get better seats or their choice of seats. All of the transactions are recorded. Obviously, we're not recording credit card data, but we're recording who paid the purchase, uh, their address, their email, their phone number, all that information is, is recorded. So you're able to data mine and report on that and do some target marketing. So let's move into the administrative application and show you a little bit about how this all is set up and how it operates. So within the administrative application of one card box office, there's a structure to it, and you're going to decide you're going to define a number of different things. First is, of course, all of your venues. You can have multiple venues. You could have uh, set up an arena, a theater. You could have even multiple locations underneath a main location. So let's say your playhouse might have a you know. Uh, a main theater, but maybe they have a, a black box or a small theater that seats 50 people or something for smaller production. You can still have the playhouse as your main venue and then the different locations underneath there, underneath that as um, individual or readers. So there's a structure of the venue. You'll be setting up location, arena, sectors, meaning when I'm doing my seating, how do I want it broken out? Uh, are there different sections or is it all one section? Because the sections will come into play when you start doing pricing structure, the number of rows and seats that you have in that facility. The properties of the venue, such as the production categories, is it a um, Broadway play? Is it a concert? Um, if it is a Broadway play, is it a musical or a, um, a regular play? Is it a concert? Is it a uh, hard rock? jazz, easy listening, pop. Uh, maybe you have uh, a cinema series on campus that you're going to sell tickets to. Is it a comedy, a, um, a drama, um, or, or any other number, uh, an action adventure type of, of movie? So you can set up the different categories of the productions. And then when somebody goes online to search for different events happening on your campus, they could drill down by what they want to see or just search accordingly. You'll be able to set up priority zones for each of the productions, meaning um, the different priority zones will have different pricing structures assigned to it. And I'll show you this in a, in a little bit. But if I'm a priority zone one sitting in, I want to choose a section in the, in the facility that's priority zone one, my price might be $20. If I'm in a VIP section, it might be $30. If I'm in priority zone two, perhaps it's uh, $5 or something like that. So it does allow you to set pricing accordingly based on uh, priority zones and uh, the categories that you set up. And of course, once you set up those various properties of the venue, you can divide them to and assign them to different events um, obviously, you could create new ones as needed per event, but you might have existing ones that you could, you know, every concert will have the same setup, the same seating chart, the same cost structure, the same priority zones, 
Uh, and you can then just assign them to various productions and schedule when those productions will take place and um, when the tickets go on sale. So for example, even if you're, if you're showing uh, a movie on campus, maybe you're, you're showing um, Frozen on campus or Wolf of Wall Street, you, could, you might have different times in a day, the 12 o'clock, the 3 o'clock, the 8 o'clock show. Those would be individual scheduled events that you would have within the application. So a venue is defined as a hierarchical structure of a location with one or more arenas, arenas, each of which contains one or more sectors divided into rows and seats. So here's really how you can see the hierarchical structure. So your location might be a uh, campus box office. Then you might have your, uh, your main theater. You might have your uh, basketball arena. You set up your sectors and which seats and rows are underneath those sectors. So just like here in this uh, example to the right that I'm hovering over, uh, this black box with the colored seating, these would be set up within box office and the different colors would be different uh, sectors which would have different priority zones for pricing. So if you're in the mezzanine, you might have in the back here, you might have different pricing. If your center uh, would be a better pricing structure and back of the so left and right wing would be uh, another pricing structure. So one card box office allows different number numbering schemes for the rows and seats in a sector. You'll see here in the screenshot how you can uh, label them. So you're going to put in the number of rows and number of seats um, in each row. And this will create the floor plan for you. Once you set it up, you'll be able to adjust it. And we'll get into that a little more. But you could label, well, how are your seats um, defined? Are they letters for the rows and numbers for the seats? Are they all just numbers? Which order is it? Um, whether there is consecutive seating or you have uh, one sector that is even, one sector that's odd, or they're grouped together uh, in, in one fashion or another. So this will allow you to put in these parameters and it will automatic, automatically create the seating charts for you. We do provide flexible customization of the venue. Uh, and this is done by categories, as you'll see here, as I mentioned, you, limit, you list the different categories. So this would appear on the website that the student is looking at to purchase tickets as the breakdown. Uh, you'll see that on the, on the website in a few minutes, uh, but you'll see the breakdown of the different categories. I mentioned priority zones. And with priority zones, you could define categories of the seats used for price formation. So when you configure these priority zones, it depends on the events uh, that take that application at the arena. So, you know, here is a seating chart maybe for a, a movie. You know, generally people don't like to sit in, in the front or off to the sides, um, but they do like dead center. So these tickets in the light green might be a higher price the tickets in purple might be another price because there are folks that like to sit right in the back of the theater, uh, but the blue and the dark green are different prices as well. Now for theater, people like to sit center and forward. So here you'd have the, uh, the seats accordingly for a theater type of event. Now once you create a seating chart, you can reconfigure it by enabling and disabling seats. So if you know your seats are not in your facility are not as even as this, just square of seats, but they're streamlined coming down the sides where seats drop off, and the closer you get, the smaller the rows get, you can figure them accordingly by just removing seats, and it would uh, automatically relabel the numbers uh, across the row. For this, let's say we took a, a standard theater type seating, but used it for a conference where the area up here uh, might be for select individuals. There'll be some 
something going on in the middle and then the rest around here. So uh, you're able to configure your seating charts however you, you need to for your uh, location. Pricing scheme, as I mentioned, allows configuring ticket prices depending on the event and priority zones. Your productions and schedule of events defines the events that are scheduled to play, take place at the venue. So you'll be able to add them to a listing of production, and that's how they will show up on the website. Of course, they will be broken down into event type and categories automatically. So you don't have to say, oh, put this one here, put this one here, uh, this one goes over there. You just list them here and choose that they're production events um, for the website, and they'll appear there in the proper location and breakdown for searching. So let's get into a little bit about, uh, a little bit more, dig a little deeper about the arena definition. So you're gonna choose the venue, venue that you'd like, and then choose the arena. You would define uh, an arena, maybe they, that you have multiple on your campus and you define them there. Give it a name and a general description. Uh, how it falls under in terms of the, the sector designations or the road designations and uh, the arena designation. So you define that and that's creating your arena. Once you create the arena, you then move into your sector definition. As I mentioned before, you'll set up the number of rows and number of seats across the row and the starting numbers of each and it will create the seating chart automatically for you. Now when you define an arena, you can put in a picture so somebody online could click an icon and see a picture of the seating chart. So you could pull that that right in uh, from a PDF or an image graphic that you may have of that uh, seating chart. However, you know we're going to create the actual seating chart that is interactive, that'll um, allow you to see what seats are taken and not taken and define the uh, facility as needed for that particular event. Now you he see here as after I set up that um, the seating chart there, you see how it creates it and it does the uh, row letters and numbers uh, it continues on up. You can add seats back in by just clicking on them and enabling, and then it will readjust the number sequence. Or you can disable seats if need be. Let's say seat D1, the seat itself is broken. You can click on D1 and disable that seat so it can't be sold until it's fixed. So that's you have that ability to have seats enabled or disabled. You would define your priority zones, so VIP, zone one, zone two, and color code them. You could, um, you then would, once you set up those priority zones, you're going to assign different seats to a zone, and it will, of course, color code them accordingly, and that will be setting the price for them. So when somebody goes online and chooses that seat, the price is assigned to it automatically, and you don't have to worry about whether they're paying the right amount for the premium seats or seats in the back of the facility. If you want to have all tickets to be the same price, you just assign them all to one zone and that's fine. Uh, and that works perfectly. But you know, most theater locations, you're gonna to want to have premium seats that are more money than, you know, the seats that are in the back of the room where you can touch the ceiling. Once you define the priority zones, you set up the pricing structure for it. So we'd go into uh, the pricing scheme for that event and choose the different pricing. So if you're in VIP, you're $50, zone two, you're 20, zone one, you're 15. And uh, if it doesn't have a specific zone attached to it, meaning you're, it's at the back of the theater and it's just a, a general seat, uh, still a side, but it's just not it listed in one of those other priority zones, they would be charged $10. So uh, you just assign them to the seats accordingly, and you're all set with, with your pricing. Production definition. This is where you create a production. Now, the production is the general definition of an event. 
it it's not going to be all the pricing, all of the uh, different times and whatnot. You do that when you're actually defining an event, uh, but the production will be the the top level. What that what that instance is, what that production is. Is it a, a movie? Is it a concert? Is it and who is the concert with? Is it a play and who, what what play is it? So you're setting that up. So this would be, let's say, if this was Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, as an example. So it would be set up in films, some category is sci-fi, and you put here a um, description of the movie. You might see here comp code and comp pin. This is where you define the comp code so that somebody can get tickets for free or um, at a discounted rate, uh, such as people in the production or uh, gold level members or what have you. They can, when they buy the ticket, they enter that code and it gives them that reduced amount. Of course, you could add a thumbnail for the, for the production so that it would show what, what the production is. Once you've defined your productions, you then go into event management. So you're going to choose that uh, production. Here as an example, it's the Iron Maiden tour. And you're going to set up the dates and times of those events and the pricing scheme. So you're going to choose uh, the production category, the production subcategory, where it's located, what uh, arena it is, and then set up the individual events. So it's the start date and start time. Um, of the event, what type of event it is, and what pricing scheme you should use. Set the sell start and end dates. So this is when tickets will go on sale and be sold through for that event. So this is from September 1st, <coughs> pardon me, to September 9th. The tickets will be on sale. And then after that, you won't be able to buy tickets anymore online. Um, the cast code would be uh, for cast member to enter a code to purchase tickets in advance. So they'd be able to purchase it, let's say, a week before September 1st. So the end of August, they'll be able to purchase their tickets. As I mentioned, it does come with a, a tool that allows you to, as a box office manager, box office staff member, someone in the ticket booth, to sell tickets uh, real time to someone and then print out a ticket. So here you see seats for this, uh, for this event. If it has the letter and number, that means the seat is available. If it has a red X, that means the seat is sold. If you see a yellow X, that means somebody has selected that seat online to purchase, and it's in process. Now, when you purchase a ticket online, you have five minutes to purchase that ticket from the time that it, um, it offers you the, the, the tickets in the sector that you want. So uh, in five minutes, if they did not purchase this, this ticket would go back to being open. A green ticket is what this administrator has selected to sell. And a blue ticket is a ticket that is in the process of being refunded. Once it's refunded, it'll go back to the regular seat number here and it would be available. So you can accept cash, check, one card, credit card, or a comp code for the sale of the tickets online uh, in the office. So you just choose it and choose the method of payment and it would uh, allow for the purchase of those tickets. Um, and then it would just simply print out a, a paper ticket that they would bring to the event. So it's a, it's a great tool for um, if you need in-person sales at a certain time, maybe the night of the event or whatnot, people coming in off the street, this will give you the ability to do that. And by doing the color coding, it'll, you'll make sure that you're not selecting a, a seat that the same seat as the person next to you uh, is selecting uh, for, for sales. We do have an integrity check within the system. So when you set up an event, you can run it through the integrity check and it'll tell you what's wrong with your setup. So Soccer City Stadium doesn't have any defined sectors in it. City Opera House, Arena 3 does not have defined uh, sectors. 
So the upper house, the forecourt does not have defined sectors. And the main b building location, uh, under the default pricing uh, scheme, there's not a price listed for uh, a non-priority zone. So you would need to add a price to that. Otherwise, the tickets will go to people for free. So this helps you make sure that you're not having any errors in your setup and that everything will function as needed. Now to, to configure the web portion of Box Office, there is a configuration tool. And you'll see here the different payment types, one card payment type, other payment type, other configuration. You can have an RSS feed right on the website. Your search configuration, how someone can search online for different events. Event configuration, reservation configuration, delivery methods. You could choose for an event what the delivery methods of tickets are. It's electronic at the point of purchase online. Maybe you'll do a uh, will call that they could pick up their ticket at the box office. Maybe they purchased this and weren't near a printer or didn't want to print out a ticket themselves. The tickets will get emailed to the individuals at the time of purchase as well, but maybe they just want to pick up a ticket. Or you could even do mail. If you wanted to mail tickets to individuals, you could do so and uh, have it set up for that delivery method. And of course, the PDF for the electronic ticket will be how you define the ticket itself, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But let's just look at a couple of these tabs. The search configuration, how many search results per page, the maximum description size that you want to enter in, and what you want to show. If you want to show the thumbnail picture, the set subcategory name, the event date and time, location, which arena it's at, the different prices, and the purchase button. So that would be for searching. We move over to reservation configuration. What's the form of payments that we're going to allow? Uh, one card, whether or not you want to pin on a one card payment, credit card, comp payment, cash, check payment, and messages to send to those people that are trying to buy tickets if it's before the sale date. Return that it's not started yet. If it's after the sale date, uh, you know, that it's not available on the web, please check with the box office. And days before start sale date to be active cast code. So when you establish that cast code that I mentioned, you said here, well, how many days before the start date for the event do I want the, the cast to be able to purchase their tickets? Seven days, 14 days, what have you. Here is the way you set up the PDF. Ticket you have, um, and you'll see the finished one in a few minutes. But you set up your your ticket header, your ticket footer, the legalese or disclaimer, additional information. You know, if you get hit in the head with a baseball at the baseball game, it's not our liability. You know, you must bring the ticket with you at the to the events. Tickets are non-transferable. All that type of stuff. And what the subject will be in the email when the email is sent to an individual with their PDF ticket, and what will be the, in the body of that email. So what you're going to say to those people. Now let's move into the user application. This is the web portion that someone would utilize. So when they go to the website, this is, for example, of what it would look like. And you can change the look and feel of this to a degree. But it would have your search option up here to search. You'd have your different categories here to browse for an event, so sports, movies, music, and the subcategories. And um, when it shows you the events, you just simply click to purchase the tickets. <clears throat> so you have a, a, an attractive site that will, you could even search by date. So if you want to see, you know, I don't know what I want to do this Friday. Let me see if there are events on campus. You click on that date and you get a listing of the events that are being uh, operated through the box office. When you choose that event that you want to go to, you're going to choose the sector, price, and number of tickets. So uh, I want to uh, purchase two or three tickets. I do want to sit in sector A, and it will usually automatically define the price within sector A unless there are multiple prices available. So maybe there's a $20 ticket and a $50 ticket. Sector A has $20 tickets in a better spot uh, than the $50 tickets. So how much you want to pay for the tickets. You then would click on find tickets and it would suggest to you available tickets in that location. You of course can 
uh, click on the icon next to the, the venue to see more about the production, more about uh, where the venue is located, and the seating chart. So if it's listing out sector A, uh, row C, seats 3 and 7, you could go and say, okay, well, here's the stage. Here's where my seat is. Yeah, that'll work for me. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and purchase that. If you don't like the selection, just click on Find Tickets again, and it will recommend another set of, of, of tickets. Once you click on Buy Tickets or Purchase Tickets, it'll move you into the Purchase screen, and it will allow you to make selections based upon what's allowed by your definition. So if you're allowing credit card and one card payments, it'll pop up to allow you to choose either one card or credit card and ask you for the pertinent information. If you're allowing different delivery options, it'll ask you for that information. And then some biographical information, uh, full name, email, various notes, and your address. <coughs> Pardon me. So you'd simply fill out this form, click on Submit Order, and you would receive your PDF ticket generated right on the screen and it will automatically be sent to the email account that you have listed. So um, here's how the ticket would look. Obviously you could change fonts and what have you, but it's just an example with the font. See you here have a, a header and uh, a footer, the location information, what row, what, what seat, who purchased the ticket, the transaction number for reference. So if somebody had to go back in the system and reference the transaction, an administrator had to, they could enter this reference number. And then there's a barcode on the ticket for scanning for entry at the event. So if you've bought tickets online for any type of sporting event or <coughs> theater event before through other systems, you probably received a ticket similar to this that then would be scanned upon entry. So it's very similar to that. We do have complete reporting features within the box office application. So you can report on all the different events, who's purchased tickets, by what method, and do your reconciliation. An example right here, a report is you choose can choose the different categories or events, send it to Excel if you'd like to, or, or print it, show it to the screen, the event date or the transaction date, how you want to see that. If you want to see passes, fails, or both, and then it will give you the information here, the date of transaction, the name of the event, uh, the date and time uh, of the event, number of tickets purchased, what the price was, the total price, uh, the name of the purchaser. Obviously, we had uh, just some data in there. Purchase method, what account number it was purchased with, if it was a one-card transaction, and the seat assigned to that individual. So you'd be able to track all of your sales, and of course, you could go to the event and just click on the seating chart to see uh, what seats are still available for any particular event, how many seats are left, uh, so you know how many more seats you have or whether you're sold out or not. So you get a lot of good information from the reports that are within uh, one card box office. So that really ends the formal presentation. If anybody has any questions, by all means, please uh, type them in. I'd be happy to, to uh, answer them for you. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to type in some questions. Of course, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to just email me, and um, I'd be happy to, to answer your questions. If you'd like a demonstration specific to your campus, uh, we can do a demo and, and do a live demo for you and let you uh, play around in the system a bit. We ha do have a version set up in, in, in our Colorado Springs office as well as in Bulgaria. So we can uh, ask to give you access to that so you can see it, play with it, and we can show you the administrative application. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, easy system to set up. You're setting up your, your venues, your seating, your sectors, your pricing, and then defining events and choosing where you're having it and what pricing structure you want. 
and the website is automatically configured by your the configuration tool. So you don't have to do any HTML coding or any other web-based coding. It creates those pages for you, and you tell it where to um, where to post them, and it will post those pages. So, are there any questions from anybody? Okay, here's one that came in. How about the branding for the website? Uh, that's a good question. Let me go back to picture of the site. You do have control with the configuration of the site to uh, obviously have it look how you want. Uh, there's a you know generic sort of format, but you can uh, obviously it doesn't have Heartland's name really anywhere on it. You can brand it for your campus, such as uh, with your campus name and logo that can be placed on here very easily with the configuration tools. So obviously you could brand it for your location and choose some color schemes differently. So it can be branded for you in the configuration tool. <coughs> what type of scanners are needed to scan tickets? Um, you would utilize uh, mobile-based barcode scanners for, for those that we would be able to work with you on providing. So uh, there's a couple of different that can be utilized, but they're uh, barcode scanners. Uh, if, you, if you wanted to scan them with, you know, something attached to a computer, you can. Most I would recommend doing uh, either a tool like the Pocket One card or a mobile application that has the barcode scanner uh, attached to uh, the mobile device or a, USB, uh, or a Bluetooth barcode scanner that can scan the tickets and communicate back to a mobile device. So uh, you do have a, a, a number of different options. Uh, if you've entered into, let's say, a sporting arena with a ticket or a concert with a ticket, and they've scanned your ticket, exactly like that. They're going to have a handheld device that's going to scan the ticket and record your entry and that it is a, a valid ticket. Are there any other questions? Again, feel free to feel free to uh, email me if you have any other questions, or give me a call. I'd be happy to to answer them. And uh, here is my email address, our website, and the phone number. So I do thank you for your time. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, Please feel free to sign up for any of our other webinars that are listed on our website. We look forward to seeing you there. And thank you again for attending today, and I hope to see you all soon.